Hello, I'm Victor Sane, and today we're going to show you how to change the oil on a 2010 Toyota Prius. And we're going to show you how to reset that annoying oil change reminder thing. So here's what you need to do this job. First and most important is coffee. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's good. Then you're going to want a oil filter which has the six on the end, not the one. You're gonna need the oil filter socket. You're gonna need a 14 millimeter, a socket or a wrench, either one. You're gonna need either a 27 millimeter to fit your oil filter socket, or you could just use an adjustable wrench. It actually fits. You're gonna need a funnel, you're going to need some 0W20. Now, I picked the Mobile 1. It is the best of the synthetics for this. But the most important thing is that you get full synthetic. Do not get synthetic blend. Full synthetic 0W20. Now, you can use good alternatives to this. You can use the Toyota 020 full synthetic. You could use this Mobile 1, which is kind of pricey. But... Almost as good is the Valvoline and the Amazon oil. Believe it or not, the Amazon oil rates right up there with the Valvoline and a lot of other name brand synthetic oils, not synthetic blend. Synthetic blend, you don't know if they've got 1% synthetic in there and 99% regular or 99% synthetic and 1% regular. They can do whatever they want and they don't dispose any disclose anywhere on the label exactly what the blend is. You're also going to need your jack, a drain pan, and some safety stands. That is if you're not putting it on the lift. Which I'm assuming you don't have a lift, that's why I'm doing this DIY style. Alright, first thing you want to do is put your key fob somewhere far away from the car. Then make sure you put your coffee in a safe place so it doesn't get spilled. Take the cap off. Always double check when you're doing oil changes and look at your cap. It does say 0W20. You may already remember this from some of my other videos, but the jacking point is just to the right, just to the right of the Toyota emblem. Because there is a splash guard here that covers the entire engine bay, but you're not going to have to remove the entire thing. On a separate video, I'm going to show you how to put a new one of those splash pans in here that's considerably cheaper than the OEM, but because it's aftermarket, you're going to have to drill a couple of holes, make a couple of modifications to make it fit correctly because they're not made exactly right. And you can see there are push pins here where it was. But like I said, you don't have to take the whole thing out. you got your oil filter right here and your drain plug right here. And as part of that cover, there is a smaller cover on the cover that you just release three of the push pins and then fold it back towards the back of the car to get access to the drain plug and the oil filter. Don't forget to put your cardboard down and put everything you need down here on your cardboard, including your drain plug, before you go under. That way you don't have to get up and down, up and down several times. Okay, there's a right way and a wrong way to install this socket. There is a higher fin, I'm going to call it, right here. And in this center notch, line that up. When you do that, you'll be able to get your socket further down on the cap. So that is lined up with the highest notch. And now it's further down on there and you can see there's not much of a gap here. And with your 14 millimeter, make sure you get seated all the way on the bolt, break it loose. And once it's loose, you're probably not going to be able to ratchet because it doesn't really have any, any resistance. Spin it out with your hand. Make sure you're wearing a glove because you're probably going to end up with some oil on your glove. Yep, like that.
Now, see, that didn't take very long. Now, what we're going to do may seem a little strange, but once that gets down to a low roar, we're going to put the bolt back in for a second so we can work on the oil filter. And once we're done changing the oil filter, we can take the bolt back out and let it sit there and drain the last little bit. This way, while we're working on the oil filter, we don't have stuff dripping on us. The handle is going to go towards the back of the car. Make sure that you are loosening and not tightening, which means it turns counterclockwise like anything else. And once you get your socket on here, and like I said before, you can either use the socket, you can use an adjustable wrench because it, it will fit on there. And you can use your regular 3 8 ratchet and it will fit in the hole right here. Whichever seems to be the best for you. What I did was use the big socket with the big ratchet handle. And I came back here, grab hold of this piece of subframe with my hand and place my foot on this and push towards the back of the car to break it loose. Because as I said, they are notoriously very tight. Now, if you're on a regular car lift and you're able to stand up for this, it's much easier because then you can use a breaker bar or breaker bar with a cheater bar because you've got lots of room. But when you're in a DIY situation like this, you've only got so much room before you hit the ground. So you can't get a lot of leverage. Either way, it's loose now. So we can go ahead and turn. Turn, turn, turn. This is also why it's so critical to get this socket lined up right here because you don't want the socket slipping and tearing up your oil filter cover. And I should not have taken my glove off because this is gonna get messy. All right, take note right here at where the O-ring is on the cap, because it's very critical. If that O-ring is not down in that groove, if you put it all the way to the top of the cap, like some other caps and things, it's supposed to be that way on some other caps. But on this cap, it is not supposed to be all the way down. It's supposed to be right where it is now, down in that O-ring groove, just past the threads. And do you hear that? Do you hear that something fall in the, into the drain pan? That there is a spring that just fell in there and we're gonna have to retrieve that because that spring needs to be there with this filter cartridge, which is nasty. Oh, oh that thing is nasty. Look at that. Okay, once you've retrieved the spring from the oil pan, I mean the drain pan, drain pan, oil pan, I guess it doesn't make any difference. Once you've retrieved that spring, the spring goes right here, but we've got to change our filter cartridge first. My other glove on. Right there, it's in all the way. And your spring goes right there. Now with O-rings, just like transmission work, grab it one end and pull towards your other thumb that you're holding down with. Forces it up a little bit. If it's really, really brittle, you might have to reach in there with a pick and break it to get it out of there. But there goes the O-ring. Never throw an old O-ring away until you've successfully installed your new o-ring and double check for fit reason is if there's something wrong with your new o-ring or if it somehow gets damaged and there's nothing wrong with your old o-ring you may have to as a btn effort 
BTM being better than nothing. If you're watching my videos, you'll know what that means. You may end up having to reuse the old ring. Having a good old O ring is better than having a bad new one. Okay. So, the spring goes down inside the cap. I don't know if you noticed this, but as a matter of habit, I took these two fingers that have oil all over them and nervously just as a habit rubbed it all over the o-ring you want to have a habit of doing that to an o-ring on filter changes for two reasons number one you want to lubricate the o-ring number two you want to be in a habit of feeling of the o-ring before you put it back on this does two things on conventional oil filters there's usually an o-ring at the top and you want to rub your finger on the surface that that o-ring fits on this way you get in the habit of checking to make sure that you don't have two o-rings one o-ring stuck on the surface and another o-ring on your filter because if you end up with two o-rings it's just as bad as having no o-ring and that's what it looks like down inside the canister that stays on the car where the oil filter goes i always like to peer in there and just see the threads now making sure that our spring and everything is in exactly the, the, where we wanted it to be pivot that up so much easier while not holding the camera all right now this is just a plastic cap so it is imperative that you do not cross thread this thing Take your time and make sure that it feels right and if it's protesting at all do not force it this feels very smooth and very easy until I hit the o-ring and you can feel when you hit the o-ring that it's a little draggy with the o-ring I'm so glad I put some lube on it I think torque specs on this are about 18 inch pounds. Now most of the resistance you feel here is the O-ring. You're gonna have to look at the gap here. And just slowly, bam, right there. You can feel it touch. And then just a little snug and that's all you need now let's return to the drain plug and take it back out again any oil we didn't get out the first time should be sitting there waiting to come out yeah it's got a thicker stream now so some of it settled down towards the drain plug and now it's coming out now this could take a while so we're gonna go do something else and come back now, did you notice any steps that I included in this video that others skipped? If so, comment below. Okay, when it gets to where it's just barely dripping like that, you know you're done. The oil plug washer is stuck to the pan with a little bit of silicone there. You can probably see that. And you don't want to reuse these oil plug washers more than three or four times. So every, like every third or fourth oil change, change those. And I know some guys like to change it every time. I don't see any problem with that. They're pretty cheap. You know, you change it every time if you want to. Better is better. You know, more often it's better. Now with this, you don't want this any tighter. Well, I guess the specs are like 21 inch pounds. So it is a tiny bit tighter than the oil filter. But you're not going to be able to tell by feeling of it that it's any tighter. It's just snug, you know. It's maybe snug and a sixteenth of a turn. But an eighth of a turn after snug on this would be a huge amount. You'd be crushing that washer to the point where you make it leak. I should mention that if it's a car you're not familiar with and you don't know when the last time it was changed, the washer that is, then go ahead and change it. Now, it's not absolutely necessary, but I did pull the cover off because it's so easy and it makes it easier for me to get my filter down in here in such a way that it's not going to fall over.
Okay, this is a five quart container and it's almost empty. You're gonna to wanna to give that some time to settle down into the pan before you check the oil. Now the dipstick shows that it's full. I put four quarts in there. There's still a quart in this five quart container, but don't trust that. You're gonna to wanna to put your cap back on. And remember, at the beginning of this, we put the key fob way away from the car so nobody could start the car without any oil in it. It can't start itself. We're gonna get the key and we're gonna force the engine to start. We're not gonna let it run long, just long enough to circulate some oil. Shut it off, get the key away from it, and check the oil again. Now the engine is running. We're just gonna let that run for a few seconds. It doesn't take very long to pump that oil around. And we don't want it to take any longer than it has to because we don't want it to run low. Again, anytime you're under the hood of one of these things, take this key fob away from it. All right, it's still showing full, but this time we're gonna let it sit. We've wiped off the stick. We're gonna let the stick sit there and the engine not running. If you know why we would do it that way, comment in the comments below. Okay, we've done everything we could to make absolutely certain that it is full. And you can see here that there is about a half a quart left in the five quart container. So that means we ended up with around four and a half quarts in the engine. Don't forget to put your oil cap back on and your cover back on. Would you like to get rid of this annoying maintenance required light? First, you've got to put turn on the start button without cutting on the engine. As you can hear, the engine's running right now. So let's turn this off. Press the power button. Make sure that it's on trip A. It's already on trip A, but you just press the trip button till you get to trip A. Turn this off. Hold the kilometer button, press the power button, and hold. Oh. And voila, you're done. Remember in some of my other videos, me recommending that you, you put this Rizlone with zinc treatment. There's several different Rizlone oil additives. This is the one with zinc treatment in your older engines. Uh, but do not, I am not recommending, never put this in your Prius engine. Don't put this in your later model engines. The extra zinc, the reason why the federal government mandated that they take most of the zinc out of our oils is because the extra zinc ruins the catalytic converters. So if you're putting extra zinc into your Prius engine, you will ruin your catalytic converter. The engine components... In that and most later model engines are made to run with less zinc so it shouldn't be a problem not having this in your oil plus using the synthetic oil helps with that that's another reason why I said so many times don't use the synthetic blend don't use the regular oil just use the full synthetic and in your older engines you can still use this because in your older engines if you've got an older engine that either doesn't have a catalytic converter or it's old enough to do to legally do a catalytic delete and you don't have to worry about catalytic converter then you want all the zinc you can in one of those engines so the engine components will last as long as they can with the later model engines and you have to have the catalytic converter you've got to have that balance between uh, making your catalytic converter last a long time and making your engine components last a long time so do not put this in your later model engines don't do anything I do in my videos, and don't even do anything I talk about in my videos. Welcome to St. Auto. We're so glad you're here. We don't just do repairs and tool reviews. Bienvenida a St. Auto. Nosotros no solamente hacemos We also film hot rods and mod rods, project cars, classic cars, antiques. Nosotros también filmea autos antiguos. Mod rods, hot rods, cualquiera. We also like to take you with us to the car shows and the cruise ins, so make sure you subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss anything. 
me le gustaría llevarte con nosotros a los cruisers y car shows. Entonces, empuja ese botón y toca la campaña para que no pierda nada. Why do you insist on making a liar out of me, you car?